okay so now in i2c communication just i am going to take 8051 as a master device and i am taking one peripheral which is eprom as a slave okay so already know about whenever you want to establish i2c communication between two devices then which physical lines you are expecting from the device hda and acl right then once you observe the 8051 pin diagram i think you people will never find this hda and acl from the device but i want to consider as a master but as a master then what are the three responsibilities here which has to initiates the communication and generating clock cycles and terminates communication right along with this hda and acl lines but coming to this 8051 as a master device i think you people will never find this hd and acl right so which is supporting only gpios and timers interrupts and serial port i am with rxd and txt but now so just i am making a general io lines and i am making one line as sda and one line as scl okay so and all this general io lines you want to make it as sd and scl so the as a master which has to generate clock cycles and which has to generate which has to initiate the communication and which has to terminate the communication right so whenever you want to initiate the communication which has to generate one start condition here okay so what is the start condition i2c rules and regulations so coming to this start condition of i2c rules and regulations so while scl is high so make hda line high to low ones so this is the rule with your i2c protocol whenever you want to generate or whenever you want to initiates the communication like initiation means start so whenever you want to start the communication make scl line high and make sda high to low ones then whenever you want to represent in a diagrammatic manner this is the complete clock that means in the this is your clock high stage so this is your scl and this is your sda so while scl is high then you people have to make sda high to low ones right so this is the way we have to make this io lines so now so what i am doing here so while scl is high so i am making this sda high to low ones because our io pins they can perform our logics based on our program once you keep it logic 1 they will hold logic 1 once you make it logic 0 they will hold logic 0 right okay so this will this i can do through programming so whenever you want to initiate your communication for start also you have to write program in i2c communication for implementing i2c communication with peripheral i2c peripherals okay so that means what i am doing here for initiating the communication i am going to write this start condition here and what is the start condition here while scl is high make sda high to low ones okay so this is the start condition in i2c rules and regulations then what about stop condition so here so the same thing which is opposite to start that means while scl is high so you people have to make this sda line low to high ones so that means whenever your scl is high this is the complete clock and from this this is the on time this is your scl and you people have to make this sda low to high so this is your stop condition okay so here whenever you want to initiate the communication our people are going to make this scl is high you are making sda high to low ones and whenever you want to do, terminates the communication termination means you are going to stop the communication how you can stop the communication so while scl is high then you people have to make sda low to high ones so these are the two things you people it can perform by our master because now my master is 8051 whenever i want to implement this i2c rules and regulations so for the first condition is it has to 
initiates the communication. How can you initiate your communication? By generating this start condition. And whenever you want to, the, what is the other responsibility of master which has to terminate the communication? How you can terminate? By applying this stop condition. What is the stop condition here? While SCL is high, then you people have to make this SDA low to high. Then what about the remaining data transmission? Because so coming to the I2C data frame, which is very simple. So which it should be stop and data. And whenever the master is sending some data to slave or slave to master, which will give acknowledgement. And the other condition should be stop. If which is providing the continuous acknowledgement, then it will go for next byte. So this is a simple one byte of data transmission happens with your I2C communication. The first thing is start and how you people can implement this start condition through program. So just make hold this SCL I open logic high, then make this SDA I open logic high to low ones. Then this is your start condition here. And how to make generate this stop condition here? Just make this SCL line high, then you people make this SDA line low to high ones. This will be terminates your communication. And then how you people can share the data, original data between master to slave. So for this, from SCL line, you have to generate the continuous clocks. So these are the clock lines you are generating from SCL line. So and the data you have to send from through SD only, right? And whatever the falling edge, because the I2C communication for each falling edge, whatever the logic of SD align, this will be treated as original data. Okay, so whatever the SDA logic, whether it is holding logic one or logic zero, it doesn't bother. But before falling edge, then whatever the logic of SDA, that will be treated as original data. Okay, like so you people, this will be your timing diagram. for your device like so the SCL which is continuously generating this clock cycles and through SDA our people are going to share the data between master to slave okay so but so your consideration should be for each falling edge whatever the original data holded by this SDA line that will be treated as original data you are passing from master to slave or slave to master this will be happens you can done through this data and what about acknowledgement so at ninth clock pulse because the SCL which is continuously giving clock cycles at 9th clock pulse the slave will give the response to master as an acknowledgement and this acknowledgement which is always 0 so acknowledgement should be logic 0 once which is providing this logic 0 acknowledgement then only the response is right or the master understands you are doing a proper communication with the slave ok so this is the best way so this is the simple uh, simple data frame this is one byte of data transmission between master to slave so which has to generate start and you have to send this data and this data will be transferred from MSB to MSB to LSB because coming to the previous protocol how the data will be transmitted from LSB to MSB but now in I2C communication first the data will be transmitted from MSB side to LSB side and the, the other thing is here involved here acknowledgement this should be the response between master to slave or slave to master and the other thing is stop and this stop how can you generate so by, while making SCL high you people have to make this SDA low to high funds ok so this is the simple so data frame or data timing diagram between master to slave and now I am considering 8051 is a master device so because of no inbuilt of SD and SCL line, I am implementing all these rules and regulations through programming. Okay, so but once the device supports I2C inbuilt, then there is no, no, no need to write this start condition, there is no need to write stop condition. For this data transmission, there is a like SBUF register in a word, they will give a temporary register for you for sharing the data between master to slave or slave to master. And acknowledgement is compulsory, you have to check. For every 8 bits of data transmission, the slave or master, they will share each other this response. Okay. 
So this will simple scenario happens. So whenever you are looking to implement I2C protocol rules and regulations with 8051 as a master and uh, slave as a other device. So now here you people can work out EPROMs, RTCs, serial ADCs or port expanders. So these are all the devices you people can go through as a slaves. Thank you.